Uh, greetings, brothers and sisters in, in the Lord Jesus Christ. This is Brother Cruz here in Temple, Texas. Praise the Lord. I'm so happy because uh, I'm here in Temple. I've been gone for a few days. I've been in Dallas. I've been I've been working in Dallas, Texas. Uh, you know, it's temporary. It's only temporary for right now. But keep me in prayer as I travel back and forth from Temple to Dallas. Anyhow, uh, today uh, I want to share I titled it, uh, Characteristics of God's Saints. Saints, And I'm only going to cover four areas, that's all, that I think are, are important that they should be visible in our Christian life. But, you know, so, so I pray that this will be a blessing to you and that this would in, inspire you to allow these characteristics to flow out of you as a vessel of God, as an instrument of God. And the first thing I want to talk about is, uh, I get it from 2 Corinthians 1.12, uh, because this video is kind of short. I'm not really going to go into the verse, because uh, that will just inspire me to go even deeper and deeper into the into the verse. And, and I don't really want that, the video to go that long. But anyhow, but the first thought I want to bring out about a characteristic that should flow out of us is, is your sincerity as a believer, being sincere in the Lord. You know, uh, we should be sincere in our faith, in our walk with God. You know, back in, uh, I don't know how long now, maybe 70s or 80s, I don't remember, but there used to be a commercial on TV about Coca-Cola saying it's the real thing. That was their that was their their saying, their slogan, that Coke is the real thing. Well, my friends, that that slogan that that saying ought to apply to us as Christians. When people see us, they ought to say, "Man, he's the real thing. Man, she's the real thing. He's the real deal. He's not fool's gold, but he's gold." She's not fool's gold, but she's gold. Praise the Lord. You know, I pray that our walk would be sincere before the Lord. It would, it would be genuine before God. All it does is glorify God. All it does is, is let people know that, man, that's a real man of God. That's a real woman of God. Praise the Lord. You know, I don't know about you, but we got enough baloney going on in the church and a lot of churches right now. We got a lot of baloney going on in the kingdom of God. You know, it's time for steak to rise to the top. Steak, you know, ribeye steak, a New York uh, strip, uh, uh, T-bone steak, you know. Uh, it's time for uh, steak to show up instead of bologna. So my friends, on thought number one, it's my prayer that you would take your Christianity serious and, and that you would be sincere and genuine in your profession of faith to Jesus Christ. Yes, we're mortals, which means we're flawed, which means we were imperfect. But with the help of God, with the, with the sanctifying power of the Holy Spirit, and with us being uh, disciplined in the Word of God and being obedient to the words of God, we can show a life of sincerity in our walk with God. Amen. Thought number two. I get it out of Acts 2.42. Like I said, I'm not going to read the verse. You can look it up on your free time uh, if you need to or if you want to. But it talks about uh, thought number two. Another characteristic that ought to flow out of us is being steadfast. Praise the Lord. You know, there's people that go to work that, that work out. They work their bodies out. And they work out every single day. But I guarantee you one day, that day one, when they worked out on day two, they didn't see a growth of muscle. They didn't see the lean machine they wanted to be. They had to, they had to make this a way of living. They had to work out and work out and work out and work out. They had to do their reps, if you'll let me say that. And then after a while of being consistent with their reps... They started seeing a lean body. They started seeing some progress with, with muscle growth, with muscle mass. You know, and so uh, we must be steadfast. I'm not going to apply it to the Christian world. 
uh, we must now we must be steadfast in our reps. In other words, our reps are I, I put down prayer, the study of God's word, the fellowshipping with one another, and with worship. You know, we can pray, and then the next day we may not we may see the answer. We may not. Uh, we can we can study, we can fellowship, and we can worship on day one and on day two. We may not see a whole lot of difference. But I guarantee you that if you stick to your reps, your spiritual reps, and you do these daily and consistently, you'll start hearing God with clarity. You'll start seeing the scriptures with more focus. And you'll start being uh, more alert uh, to the things of God. Amen. So on thought number two, let's be steadfast. Let's not be tossed to and fro with every wind of doctrine that's out there. But let's be steadfast in the in Christian doctrine. Let's be steadfast in Christian fellowship, in Christian prayer, in Christian in the study of God's word, in Christian worship. Iron sharpens iron, my friends. Let's be steadfast in 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 who we are as men and women of God. We we are uh we're mountain movers when we pray, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. We're more than overcomers, praise God. We are God's conduit for his power to flow through us when we pray for people, when we speak blessings to people. Amen. So let's be steadfast. Number one, be sincere. Number two, be steadfast. Number three, I put, I get this out of Luke 12, 35, and this is a short verse, so I'll read it. It says, be dressed in readiness and keep your arm Keep your lamps lit. Let me read that again. Be dressed in readiness and keep your lamps lit. What that means is, I'm going to summarize it, uh, concise it. What this means is, uh, uh, condense it. What this means is, be prepared. Be prepared. So thought number three uh, 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 of characteristic that should be flowing out of us is that we're, we're a watchful people. We're a watchful people. We look out for the possibility of a wolf. Uh, that's in sheep's clothing, uh, a ravenous wolf. The Bible says, uh, "We're." I, I, one of the things that I'm really watchful about is the church. What's going on in the church today? What's being taught in the church today? What is the church focusing on today? What is the passion of the, you know? The passion should be winning the lost, but it seems like right now the passion is is a bunch of uh, philosophy being taught, uh, a, a, a bunch of. Uh, uh, psychology ideology is being taught. Let's get back. The, the Bible says that we are to be fishers of men, that we have the mandate of the Great Commission. Go ye, go ye into all the world and preach this gospel to every creature. My friends, let's be watchful. What's going on in the church right now? You know, what one of the things going on right now is, uh, uh, and, and we're going to see, we're going to see. You know, a lot of people, a lot of people uh, were saying that, that Trump, God told them Trump's going to win the election. He still may. We're going to put that in God's hands. And then, you know, uh, but what if, what if he doesn't win? Let's just say that. Let's be wise. What if he doesn't win? What about all these people that under the auspices supposedly of God... They used the name of God, told them that Trump's going to win. Whoa, whoa, what's going to be the fallout, man? All these people that were that could have possibly been misled. I pray that these so-called prophets that, that said this, then there's a lot of prophets that didn't say this, but I'm talking about the ones that said he was going to win. I pray they're right. You know, it still has yet to be determined officially. But what if they're wrong? Oh my God. That's why I say we must be a watchman on a tower and, 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 and a virtue that should be a characteristic should be coming out of us as the, we are a watchful people. And how do we, how do we determine the, the level of watch, watchfulness? It's determined by the word of God. If it doesn't line up with God's word, not, not by what somebody said, but by God's word, my friends, put it in the trash can. Put it in the trash can, the garbage disposal. Throw it out in the back alley, whatever you do. Go to the local dump. Dump it. 
you know, we should determine things by, by, by God's word. The, the, the sureness, the Bible says, of his word. Praise the Lord. Anyhow, I'm watchful concerning the church. I could go on and on about that. But number two, I'm watchful about what's going on in Israel. That's the barometer I use as to when is Jesus coming back and what's going on in the world today. It, by what's going on in the church and by what's going on in Israel. So keep your eye on Israel. After all, that's going, to, that's going to be where Jesus is going to return. The Bible says he'll return as he left. The Bible says that the new temple will be built in Jerusalem. So my friends, there's a lot of people that, that teach, uh, have uh, replacement theology, meaning that Israel is no longer relevant. Forget all about Israel. My friends, I firmly believe Israel is relevant and is relevant and Israel is important. Amen. So I pay attention to what's going on in Israel. Praise God. What's going on in Jerusalem? Also, I am watchful in our own backyard. What's going on in America? You know, a lot of people don't want to, they close their eyes to the news, but you got to know what's being passed in our land. You got to know what our, our, our leaders are saying and what they're trying to pass, what bills they're trying to pass. You, we've got to be alert to what their, their, their devices, their schemes, their, their plots are, you know. Because it affects the body of Christ. It affects the Christian. It affects America, actually. And number two, we would, concerning our backyard, we need to be watchful not only for what's going on in our country, but what's going on in our... You know, that reminds me. Well, I'll get to that later. But uh, it reminds me... Also, we should be watchful what's going on in our own family. You know, what are your kids up to? Do you know what your kids... There used to be an old saying back in the Dallas-Fort Worth Metroplex at 10 o'clock. It would always say on TV... It's 10 o'clock. Do you know where your children are? My God, what's going, you know, we, we got to be watching what's going on in our kids. Are they out in the streets at one o'clock in the morning, two o'clock in the morning? You know, what's going on with them? Are they doing their studies like they should? Are they going to school like they should be do, doing? Or, you know, what's up with them? So my friends, another characteristic should flow out of us, should flow out of us is that we should be a watchful people, a watchman on a tower. And lastly, we should be, I get this out of Titus 2.14, we should be zealous of good works. That ought to be oozing out of us. That ought to be an easy characteristic characteristic that people ought to see from, God, from, from, from the Christian, from the believer, from the follower of Jesus Christ, is that they're zealous of good works. They're passionate about good works. They're passionate about helping those that are weak financially. Those that are weak physically, those that are weak emotionally, those that are weak spiritually, we're there, we're there. Praise the Lord. Eagles help eagles. Praise God. Hallelujah. And also, my friend, uh, we're, 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 we're also to be zealous of good works in the area of, of supporting the ministry. Supporting God's men, supporting God's women, supporting your evangelist, your your missionary, your teachers, your mentors, your pastors. You know, uh, we're zealous of good works. We're zealous of good works. So, my friends, I just want to uh, encourage you that may people see your good works. May your light so shine in a dark in a dark day that we live in right now. You know. There's a forecast, and, and evidently it's it's done made its way here, of 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 a second surge of COVID, and it, the news is bad on on COVID, uh, the numbers being high in America and New York City and and what California's pretty much shut down. New York is about to shut down. Thank God we live in a red state. Thank God we live in a, in, in Texas where we don't shut everything down. Praise God. Thank you, Lord. But, my friend, we must be zealous of good works. Uh, let's, let's help those that, especially in these days, like I was saying, where people need help. Where people need help. I know me in my, in my situation, um, you know, I, I don't really talk about personal things. So I kind of got to think about this, but maybe I should. You know, just so I can help somebody. But... 
you know, I went without a regular paycheck, a regular paycheck since March. My old job, uh, because of COVID, they shut down. And so it's now what, November? I'm sorry, it's December. I just thank God that week by week, he has met our needs and he has supplied our needs. Thank you, Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Thank you, people of God that have supported Cindy and I and that have helped us. Thank you very, very much. Now, let me add, update you. I do have a job now. Uh, I'm working in Dallas, like I said. And so uh, I live in Temple. That's a two-hour drive. But God will work that out. Uh, there, there is a plan behind all this. I'm not just driving to Dallas for kicks. Because it'd be easier to get a job in Temple and not drive so much. But there is a madness behind this. A good madness. There's a plan behind all this. Anyhow, uh, let's be zealous of good works. In closing, let's be sincere. Let's be steadfast. Let's be watchful. And let's pe let people see our good works. Amen. And we don't do these good works because we're forced to or we have to. We do these good works because Jesus loves us so much that we want to reciprocate that love also to others. Amen. I want to close with this. People don't care how much you know until they know how much you care. Don't ever forget that. In closing, I want to say hello to Sister Angela. And Sister Angela, we miss you in our Therapon meetings. We love you. We love it when Christopher came last time with his, with his, with his child. And also, Brother Brookings, and your wife, uh, thank you. Thank you so much for all your help and all your support. And you haven't been to one of our services because you're on the road, on the highway, traveling. And I understand that because I used to do that kind of work. But I thank you that you have been a loyal friend. Actually, you and I have a bond that few people will understand. But I love you, my brother, and I pray for you and your wife daily like you asked us to. But I love you, my friend. Thank you for your support and for your love and for your prayers. Brother Kyle, you travel all over the country, too. I love you, Brother Kyle. God bless you. I pray for you a lot. You're a friend of mine. Uh, brother Michael Fisher down in Houston. By the way, Brother Bro uh, Angela's in Fort Worth. Brookings is in Dallas. Brother Kyle is up in Olney, Texas. That's near Wichita Falls. And Brother Fisher's down in Houston. I got a lot of Houston friends. Uh, Mike Burton, and I could just go on and on. Uh, Will Huckabee, all them. But anyhow, Brother Fisher, I love you, brother. You mean a lot to me. I, 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 I was, it was a blessing when I met you in, in, what was it, Pampa, Texas. And we're still friends. That's been many years ago. Brother Tim and Sandra, you're now in Baton Rouge. Hallelujah. God bless you. You're the safe. And, and I just pray things are working out for y'all up there. And we love you guys. We thank you for your love, your prayers, your support, everything you've done for us. Thank you, thank you, thank you. We love you guys. Uh, the Smiths, we haven't seen them in a while. They've been having to do this and that with grandkids, kids, and all. Job, they got uh, one, uh, Daniel got a new job. And they now live in Ten Buck Two, way out there in, um, oh gee, what is it, Valley Mills, Texas. Tim and Sandra are in Baton Rouge, Texas. Uh, but anyhow, uh, we miss you, Smiths. Uh, to my Bethel family, I, I'm not even going to start. There's so many of you. But I love you guys from Bethel. I thank you for your prayers and your friendship. To my River Church family in Belton, Texas. By the way, Bethel's in Temple. And the River Church is in Belton. I love you guys. Thank you for your you opening your arms up to Cindy and I. We love you guys. Uh, Richard Gato and, and Linda Gato, Pastor Richards, Pastor Linda, thank you. My wife and I just ate at, I ain't seen her in days, but her and I just ate at Chili's because of a gift certificate you gave us for our anniversary. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Let me show you, let me show you the results of that gift certificate. I ordered me some ribs, and as you can see, that rib didn't have a chance I destroyed that rib. Actually, it's more than one here, but uh, I destroyed these ribs. But thank you. 
uh, Pastor Gate on Linda for that gift. It was very gracious of you. And uh, there's just so many people to thank. My Therapon family, every one of you that are faithful every other Sunday in Grand Prairie, Texas, at the Wax Museum we meet, Rachel, uh, Andy, uh, Benjamin, and Rebecca. I could go on and on. P pray for Rebecca. She's got, we're gonna, I'm going to have my fourth granddaughter here in, in early January the 3rd. January the 3rd. Four granddaughters. Wow. Boy, am I a blessed man. I can't wait to meet little Charlie. Anyhow, so pray for Rebecca, Benjamin. Uh, I could go on. Jennifer, Tim. It was good to see Tim. I could go on and all my Therapon family. I love you. Thank you, Ken, for preaching this past Sunday. I love you. God bless you guys. Remember, you don't have any problems. All you need is faith in God. God bless.